did you realize that most of the damage from drinking alcohol doesn't actually come from drinking alcohol? Let me explain. Now, when you drink alcohol, your liver has to break it down. And it does it through an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase. So the byproduct of what this enzyme breaks alcohol into is called acetaldehyde. Here's the problem. This byproduct is highly toxic, even in low concentrations. It has the ability to increase collagen growth in the liver. That's called fibrosis, as in cirrhosis of the liver. So this byproduct causes oxidation and free radicals. It's the free radicals from the byproduct that cause destruction of the liver. So then you have a sequence of things that happen. You develop a fatty liver, then you get inflammation. And the inflammation is there because the body is trying to heal something. What is it trying to heal? The damage to the liver, okay? Then scar tissue develops and you get cirrhosis. Now, there are various studies done on rats. They fed rats alcohol with a high-fat diet. And they found that this process actually accelerates. So just realize, and this is what they don't tell you, that high-fat diet was really a combination of high fats and high sugars, okay? It wasn't just a high-fat diet. So they omitted that one little point. And the problem is when you add sugar to high fats or sugar to protein, you really spike the insulin levels. So you can pretty much just omit and cross off the study because this does not to relate to what we're talking about. Now, here's the problem. The liver doesn't give symptoms until there's extensive damage. So you can go on for years and years and years without any symptoms and notice your gut increasing, but you might not make the connection, but that's what's happening. The liver is filling with fat. It's spilling off around the organs and it's ending up as visceral fat. So there's a lot of extensive damage taking place, but without the, a lot of symptoms initially. So in the liver, you have these little functional units that detoxify, they do many things. They're called lobules. So you have anywhere between 5,000 and 10,000 of these units, and they're nourished by blood, and they do a lot of things from digestion to cleaning toxins. But what happens is when you get inflammation and in scar tissue, you're gonna start losing the function. And a lot of things can happen from a loss of energy production, and this is why you might get tired. But the liver is robust and it has the ability to regenerate. But there is a point of no return where there's so much damage, you can't reverse it. And of course, the liver has the ability to regenerate, of course, if you stop doing things that are causing the destruction. So antioxidants have the power to protect these functional units of the liver. Now, your body makes antioxidants and you get antioxidants from your foods. And when you run out of these antioxidants, your cells become more susceptible to the damage. Now, the problem is you can't just go to GNC or the drugstore and buy a bottle of antioxidants to protect your liver. Why? Because those are made synthetically and the way the antioxidants work are in networks. You have many different types of antioxidants because when the antioxidant donates an electron to the free radical to stabilize that atom, that antioxidant now is unstable and it needs an electron from another antioxidant. So that's why you need a network. And this is why you always wanna get your antioxidants from foods or food concentrates. So here's a picture of a free radical. Let's say we have two electrons that are supposed to be there and you're missing one electron. So it's an unpaired electron. So a free radical is an unpaired electron. These electrons are spinning around this atom and one's missing. So if you imagine a disc that just has one weight on the side and it's spinning, and it's just going all over the place because it's not symmetrical. That would be kind of a simple concept to understand this. So an antioxidant gives up one of its electrons to stabilize this free radical, but then it becomes, to that degree, a free radical. So this gets stabilized, but now this one needs another electron from another antioxidant. So this is why many different antioxidants are necessary to pull off this job. This also explains why some drinkers get cirrhosis and some don't. It really has to do with that individual's antioxidant reserves. Usually people that drink don't eat healthily. Also, if you drink and smoke, you accelerate this process even more because the free radicals from smoking. But if you compound this and you smoke and drink and eat junk food, you're really gonna be in trouble. 
All right, guys, so what can you do to solve this other than give up the drinking? Okay, if you're gonna drink, it's very, very important to consume a diet that's extremely high in antioxidants, okay? So make sure you're consuming a lot of leafy greens. And the more someone drinks, let's say they're an alcoholic, the greater amount of vegetables they should be consuming, the healthier the diet. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Daily notifications, that sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis. How about that?